Welcome to the tenth video in my not so many mini series. We're going to look at the cumulative distribution functions, often just uh, denoted by CDF, and let's jump right in. So let's let x be a random vector um, with a distribution q. Okay, so that means that it, it's a it's the probability density function. It could be discrete or it could be continuous. But it's essentially saying the probability that X is in some set B, where you know B is the Borel uh, sigma field, the k-dimensional Borel sigma field. But let's let B be an interval, and that uh, such that we want all y less than or equal to X, you know, for a given X, and and that means that each component has to be. Each component of y has to be less than or equal to each component of x, okay, where these are k-dimensional vectors. And then we let f of x equal this q of x, of b. And this is what's called the, the CDF or, um, function, and of course evaluated at x here. And that's what we're going to study. So theorem 1, the CDF f of a random vector x satisfies the following properties. It's always between 0 and 1 for all real numbers. Um, f is non-decreasing. f is continuous from the right. Um, f of x approaches 0 as x goes to negative infinity and it approaches 1 as x goes to positive infinity and these are expressed uh, by you know, f of minus infinity equals zero and f of positive infinity goes to one. So now let's look at the proof of these. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, a, a obvious type proof. So we want to show this, but f is a probability. Remember, it's a probability of, of being in that interval. And probabilities have to be between zero and one because it's a probability measure. So now to show that it's non-decreasing, if we have, um, you know, x strictly greater than x1, then f of x2 has to be greater than or equal to f of x1. Um, that's what we want to show. But note that if we have these two variables, x2 strictly greater than x1, that says that this set is actually a subset of this. And thus, um, this probability is less than or equal to this probability. And if you look at video number five in probability measures, um, this, this, we prove this, that if it's a subset, it's essentially saying that the probability measure is a non-decreasing function, which implies this, but this is equivalent to f of one being less than or equal to f of two. So we're done. So to be right continuous, it says that if xn decreases to x, then f of xn decreases to f of x, which means it equals that. So um, if we have xn decreasing to x, that means these intervals decrease to th this set, I should say, decreases to this set. Well, this, if we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of this probability, then um, because these are decreasing sets to a given number, you, we can pass this limit inside the probability and, and look at it at, as this. But this, the limit of this, we said was this interval. Um, and again, this is uh, Theorem 7, Video 5. Um, so this limit equals that. And so it does decrease to this, but these two probabilities are equal to f of xn decreasing to f. So we're finished. So now let's, uh, if, if xn decreases to negative infinity, it says this set goes to the empty set because it gets small, 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 and eventually in the limit goes to the empty set. So that means that this probability decreases to the probability of the empty set, which is zero. And remember here, we're taking the limit, but then because it's a decreasing set, we can 
pull the limit inside this probability and the prob then that is the empty set. The limit of this is the empty set, so the probability of empty set is zero. But this is equivalent to saying f of xn goes to zero as xn goes to minus infinity. So now, and it's uh, very similar, if xn goes to increase the positive infinity, then this set ends up increasing to the real number line. So this probability in the limit goes to the probability of the real number line, which is one because it's a probability measure, but that's equivalent to saying f of xn is equal to one. So now a few notes from that theorem that we can represent probabilities of this type by the difference of these two, the, the CDF of B minus the CDF of A. And to show that, this set is equal to this set minus you know the, the set from A down. So those two sets are equal. And, and this, this set are subsets of this. And then from video five, page three, number four, we know that since this probability that we're looking for is actually this probability, and because this is a subset of that, it's actually the probability of the difference. But these probabilities are what we're calling f of b and you know and minus f of a. So this we can calculate probabilities like this. Now, the left limit of our CDF, which we denote by f of x minus, always exists, okay? It doesn't have to equal the right limit, what we said equals f of x, okay? So the probability, so we can express the probability of a equal to this difference, f of a minus the left limit of f of a. And, we, and we'll show that this way. So let x of n increase to a. And if we let the set a equal the, that x is equal to a, and the set a n equal the set of a, you know, x between x n and a, um, that says that these, you know, this set is bigger than this set. But as x n, x n goes to x a, the sets a n decrease to a and that says that this probability of of a n decreases the probability of a um, or you know if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of this set but because this set is a decreasing sequence we can take the limit n and then the limit of this interval is actually just x of a so it's a probability of a okay but it can also be thought of this way. This interval we showed up here, and you know, when you're calculating probabilities, you can use the difference. So this probability, so the limit of this is really the difference between these, f of a minus f of xn. But since this has nothing to do with n, when we take the limit in, it's just f of a minus whatever this limit is. Um, but this can be passed in because though that's an increasing sequence. So that is really f of, of uh, a, a minus. But we just said that this probability was a probability of xa. So this, which is this, is equal to the probability of xa. And that's what we wanted to show. Now f is continuous these three, uh, f of x is equal to these two limits. Now, this, these two limits we showed were equal, but when it's continuous, the left limit also equals the right limit, which implies that the probability of any point is zero when x is continuous. Now, when x is discrete, f is a step function, and it can be defined, well, it is defined as the sum of these probabilities of all x is less than that specific x. That's how you define the, the CDF. And uh, since f of xj is a probability, it's actually the, the difference of these two probabilities, f of j minus f of j minus 1. And that's assuming that we have distinct points and they're ordered. Now, 
f of x if x of x continuous note that that we can derive the CDF from the PDF in this fashion but we can also drive the PDF from the CDF in this fashion of course this is only at the continuity point but what this determines is what this says that the PDF determines the CDF right and here it says the CDF determines the PDF and then um, what that's saying is there's a one-to-one -one correspondence you know between these two functions okay now this is only a heuristic argument but this is essentially the argument if you know this the CDF you know the PDF and this becomes important like if you do a variable transformation and then you find the CDF of that transformation and show that it equals the CDF of a known distribution well that implies that it has to be that PDF or the density for is is equal to that transformation okay but now let's jump into the bivariate world. Let's assume K is 2. So our X's are of this form. And the CDF is the probability that each component is less than some number, X1 and X2. And so theorem 14, um, this, the, the K-dimensional CDF is between 0 and 1. And see, this is also going to be a no-brainer because this is a probability probabilities are between 0 and 1. Um, if we're going to find the probability in a rectangle, you can do it like this. And, uh, that's, and that's the probability that X and Y belong to this rectangle. And we'll prove that. Um, F is right continuous with respect to each coordinate. And <coughs> If x1 and x2 both go to infinity, then the CDF is approaches 1. If at least one of those go to negative infinity, then it goes to 0. And notationally, we can write it like this. If both of these components go to infinity, it's 1. If one component or both go to negative infinity, then it's 0. Okay. So now let's uh, show little proofs of these. So the first one is exactly it's sort of a, a obvious or clear moment um, probability is between 0 and 1 but this probability is f of x1 x2 it's how it's defined now this next one is a little bit more detailed but we'll go through it so in this region we're interested in this rectangle here but if we divide the region if we look at this entire region here and we and we call it a but we break it up to, this is A11, A12, A21, A22. So it's, we break it up into four components. Then A is, is each of these components, which is the set X being less than X2 and Y being less than Y2. So that's this set. Now if we look at A1 dot, which is this two regions, so it's that one plus this one, you can think of it as this entire region minus this region here and that leaves this region uh, a2 dot which is this region is a12 and a22 and that can be thought of as the entire region which is this minus this region which is that <coughs> and then uh, if we look at a the entire region a minus a21 which then leaves a11, A, uh, A12, and A22. That can be thought of as the entire region, which is what this is, minus this region, which is that. And it, and it leaves this region here. Okay, so we, we set up those these sets or these regions, and the probability of A is what is how F is defined, or CDF, the probability that we're less than X2 and less than y2 so that's this entire region now the probability of a1 dot is is we want to find this probability but the way a1 dot was defined is this difference and this set is a subset of that so we could, it's actually the difference in probabilities and that is uh, video 5 you can see that 
So it's the probability of this minus the probability of this. And, and similarly for A2 dot, this probability, we can think of it as the entire probability minus this probability. And since this is a subset of the entire thing, that's why we can take that difference. Now, A probability of A minus uh, 2, 1, which leaves this the, these regions, and because this is a subset of the entire, you can take the difference, f of x2, y2 minus f of x1, y1. Okay. Well, now if we look at this uh, probability, this is the famous probability, everybody knows it. Now usually this is over there and this is here. It's usually stated the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus probability minus the probability of A intersect B. But we can just take the, the difference there and, and we get this <coughs> probability. And so the intersection of A1 dot and A2 dot is this region. So that's the probability we're interested in. Um, but this probability is this. You know, so we plug those two numbers in there. And A2 dot is, is this probability. So we plug those in there. And then the union of A12 um, is, is this region, you know, which is that. So you plug in all those. And so the probability that we're in that rectangle, which is what that is, and you plug in the respective numbers and you get this, and that's what we wanted to show. So here, if, uh, if, um, if we have a vector x1, x2, and we have another vector xn, which is x1n, x2n, and if this vector decreases to this vector, um, what that means is each component decreases to their respective component. Well, if we apply theorem 13, part 3, to each component, then we can show that this is right continuous and this is right continuous. And that's what we wanted to show. So the CDF is right continuous in each component. Um, here, if, if both x1, x2 go to infinity, then this product space goes uh, increases to the uh, two-dimensional real line. And so this probability goes to the probability of the sample space which is 1, and that's how we define probability measure. Um, now, if at least one of them goes to minus infinity, then this set here decreases to the empty set. Now, if, if one or both decrease to minus infinity, that goes to 0. And that says that this probability goes to the probability of the empty set, which is 0. And that's what we wanted to show. Now, um, one note though, if we look at the, if we just let one component go to infinity, so notice up here both components have to go to infinity in order for this to increase to one. But what if only one component went to infinity? So that's the probability here that we're looking for, that this component goes to infinity. Well, since these are uh, would be increasing sets, of one another, then you can move that limit in, and then this becomes the entire real number line. So the probability that x1 is less than some number x1, and the this event is somewhere, but you know it, it happened. That's really just saying that the probability x1 is less than some number x1. Well, this is the the probability. It's the CDF of that first component. Okay. Well, and then similarly, we can say that if we let the first component go to infinity, that's really the CDF of the second component. And these are random variables. These here are called marginal distributions um, from the joint. And we're not going to go into that. I'm just touching upon it. And so if we want the uh, joint PDF, we, um, we can also take the partial derivative with respect to x1 and x2 to obtain this. And so we can set up some sort of one-to-one -one correspondence between the CDF and the PDF, even in higher dimensions. Okay. Well, that's all I have for today. And that's the last series, the last video in this little mini-series. 
really I wish I had you know 200 videos to do to give you maybe a full course and probably a measure but I don't and I think this is a pretty good introduction to someone that wants to to learn about probability measure at least on sort of a, a medium to low level probability measure theory um, Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss another video. Thanks. Bye.